welcome to a new episode of the studio. Today I'm just going to do a quick video about dynamic range. We're going to talk about dynamic range of our cameras, how it's limited, what effects and problems that causes, how we can overcome it and how we use Lightroom to increase dynamic range of our photos. There's also a little tip later on about how to save a lot of time doing this in Lightroom if you do this a lot. So if you know about bracketing and everything else, it's still worth hanging on, get to the end and you will love me forever. So what is dynamic range? Well, dynamic range is a property of your camera sensor and it's simply stated as it's the difference between the darkest bits of an image and the brightest bits of that image. So it's not saying that you can't take photos of very dark things or very bright things, but within the same image, each sensor has got a range of brightnesses it can, it can represent in that image. We can see that the dynamic range of the human eye, which is this top one, is much bigger and that's what gives us the problem. So we can look at a scene with our eyes and when looks great, but we're not actually able to often to capture that in a single shot. This is a scene that I took recently while on a photo tour. It's a very classic example of where you can have problems with dynamic range. We've got really bright sky, and in these dark bits, you've got some quite dark shadows in here. And the histogram is showing us that we cannot capture this scene all in one hit because the, the graph is going to each edge of that histogram and that means that you're going to have problems with your dynamic range. But let's go to the brighter image and we think well that's nicely exposed for the trees however what's happened is we've come right up against the right hand side there to, to enable these the, the dark bits to be captured and if we turn on the clipping detector it's showing us that all these areas in the sky are clipped. Now what that means is that if you were to reduce it in edit you're never going to get back the texture in the sky and that's not what you want with something like a landscape photo. All right so one way to counter that would be to go for a darker image so you expose for the sky so we check out the dynamic range we've got plenty of room here so that's absolutely fine for the sky that's why we've got all that texture in here. If we were to edit this now and really push those shadows though we're going to have a situation that because they were so dark originally there's just very little image data in there and if we get to the to that point and zoom in we're going to see that things are pretty noisy in here and we've got quite a lot of grain, quite a lot of kind of noise that's going to affect the image quality. So the way to fix this is to do it in camera, which is a process called bracketing. Now most cameras support bracketing and what it means is it just automatically takes a variety of exposures and you determine how many exposures to take and you also determine what, how many stops of light between each image you would like to take. So in here I think I did three stops or something and took two shots. So I've taken one that's darker, one that's brighter. Now, the way that that works is it doesn't do anything magic in camera. It just literally changes your shutter speed from one shot to, from one shot to the next. But what it means is when you get back into Lightroom, you have the same image, one that's very dark. We've got this all correctly exposed without any blown highlights. And we've got a brighter one, which is going to have all of this shadow detail really nicely exposed. So between those two photos, and it could be three, could be five, could be nine, whatever. But between those two, I know that I've got enough dynamic range to produce the image that I want. So what Lightroom lets us do is combine these two images. And it's actually one of the rare times that Lightroom will allow you to combine more than one photo. So you, as you know, you can't do any of the layers and masks that you can do in Photoshop. But there are two specific cases where it does let you blend images. One is panorama, so it will stitch up automatically different panoramic views. The other is a high dynamic range image. So to do that, we just select the two photos that contains the range of brightnesses we need. So we can see this one has got a gap up here, which is good. The bright one has got a little gap here. So we know that between those two, we're going to have all the data we need. So we select both of them and we simply go to photo, photo merge, HDR. Now what that's going to do is going to look at a brighter image and it's going to take the, the darker areas from the brighter image, so it's going to take the trees and everything else, so it's going to have grabbed all of this stuff from the brighter image. It also will look at the darker image and it will take those brighter areas. So it makes sure you get the sky without it being clipped and you get the darker areas without all of that horrible image noise. Okay, so it puts up this little preview to show you what it's done. It automatically will align it, so you don't need to have a tripod with this stuff. As long as you keep it vaguely in the same place, it's going to be able to align those two. And this is also doing some auto settings as well. Then we hit merge on that, and it goes to one of the background tasks, and it will create that HDR image, which will appear as a new image in your 
film strip down here. So it normally gives it the same name as one of those bracketed shots, dash HDR, and that's how you differentiate it from the others. So this HDR image is basically a single image with the best bits of two of them to make sure that we get the highest possible um, output. And it's especially important to do this. We had to do this just for this fairly overcast day, but if you imagine you have a sunset or you have a really bright area and very dark areas like a dark beach or something like that with a the sunset, then you need to do huge wide brackets to be able to capture all of that data. So when you see these beautiful landscape photography shots that just seem so incredibly exposed, it's because a photographer is taking lots of brackets and combining them either in Lightroom like this or in Photoshop. You can now edit this however you would do normally. So um, let's say, let's say look, we select the skies, bring the sky down a little bit. Um, something like that and then push everything else up slightly. So we're, we're getting the um, best of the sky and best of these, these areas. And if we look back into these areas now, they're much cleaner than they were with that single dark image. So we fixed all of that image noise. We haven't got any um, clipped highlights at the top here, and it's just a nice, um, nicely exposed scene. Right, so on to the a quick tip, because what you've noticed there is it puts up a dialogue box. Now, if you've got lots and lots of these to do, it can be really common that every photo you want to edit is the result of lots of bracketed shots. And, and bringing up that pop-up is really annoying because it sits there providing the preview and you can't do anything. And it, nine, nine set times out of 100, it gets that preview right and you're just always clicking, yes, go on to the next one. So there's a little hack that I found. Select the images that you wanted to use for your brackets. And then rather than using the menu, you simply use the keyboard. And now the normal way is if you do Control H, then you will bring up that pop-up where it does the preview. But if you do shift Control h then it just adds it straight to the task so it bypasses that um, preview stage, but you can carry on working then. So you can carry on doing the next lot of brackets and in the background, Lightroom's always then creating the brackets behind you and it's a much quicker way to go through all of your shots. I've also just noticed there's a nice hair on my sensor, which is a bit embarrassing. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you for joining. Any questions about that, please let me know. I'm always happy to answer and I'll see you next time at the studio.